Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another uh, video from the Dermatology Made Simple series. Today we're going to look at melanoma, the histopathology of melanoma. Now, let me start by saying that this is at a relatively simple level. Unfortunately, uh, diagnosing melanoma can be often one of the most difficult things that uh, a histopathologist has to do because the consequences of getting it wrong can be great. There are a whole variety of different uh, histological types of melanoma, and perhaps the most difficult for a pathologist to diagnose is one called the nevoid melanoma. We may come to that a bit later. It's one in which, um, at a superficial level, the arrangement of the melanocytes looks more nevoid, uh, nevus-like, rather than melanoma. But what we're going to deal with first is the superficial spreading melanoma. It's certainly the most common type that uh, you're going to see. And typically, you're going to see a clinical lesion like this, one which stands out from the surrounding skin with varying colors, irregular edges, large lesion, you know, greater than six millimeters, which is usually the upper limit we give for ordinary nevi. And we'll look at the dermatoscopy and the histopathology in just a minute. There are quite a few morphological clinical variations in melanoma, um, and these correspond to some extent with the histological picture, but there's always really a big degree of overlap histologically. But if you're looking at the histopathology of a superficial spreading melanoma, it's often asymmetrical. Remember, nevi tended to be symmetrical. A superficial spreading melanoma is asymmetrical. And there's varying lateral spread. But you can have a nodular melanoma, which can look, you know, very symmetrical and have very little in the way of, uh, of lateral spread. This lateral spread used to be called radial growth phase, but it's not talked about quite as much as it, uh, as it used to be. So just first of all, what are the major histological features you're going to be looking for in a superficial spreading melanoma? Well, we said the asymmetrical lesion with lateral spread. It, it'll extend out to the edges. And it's the nests and the edges that give rise to some of the peripheral dots that you may see uh, in the dermatoscopy, or pseudopods for that matter. You'll often see atypical melanocytes in a superficial spreading melanoma, and either singly um, at the dermoepidermal junction, sometimes in a sort of lentiginous spread, or in nests. The feature that makes it um, different, say, from lenticular maligna, is that there are more nests, there are atypical melanocytes in the nest, and you also have a greater degree of upward or pagetoid spread of cells in a superficial spreading melanoma. Remember in Lendigo malignant, it used to be, it's usually on the face, and you usually get a fair degree of solar elastosis underneath as well. So these, some of these melanomas that are occurring on the thigh or the back, the superficial spreading ones, they won't show that same degree of solar elastosis that uh, Lendigo malignant does. The other thing with superficial spreading melanoma is the upward spread can be so marked that there's sometimes trans uh, elimination of cells into the stratum corneum. And this presence of melanin high up in the uh, histopathology, in the epidermis, that's what makes it look black. So the position of the melanin within the various layers of the epidermis can determine some of the colors that you're going to see. If it's at the dermoepidermal junction, it tends to be brown. If it's high up in the epidermis substratum uh, corneum, it tends to be black. And if it's down in the uh, dermis, melanin tends to be blue. So the blue, the brown, and the black are the colors we, some, we sometimes see within melanomas. If you get regression within the melanoma, you may have pink or white areas. The pink areas reflecting the blood flow, the white areas reflecting uh, fibrosis and uh, elimination of nests of melanocytes in the dermis. Now, the other thing about superficial spreading melanoma, the nests vary in size, okay, and they're not confined to the sides of the reti ridges. Remember with nevi, they tended to be at the tips of the sides of the reti ridges, whereas in superficial spreading melanoma, they extend uh, much more into the, uh, over the dermal papillae and up into the epidermis. And, this, and there's an irregularity about the size and distribution of these nests. 
as against the fairly regular shape and size and position of nests in an evis. You tend to get bigger dermal nests with a few mitoses. Whenever you start to see mitoses, it's unlikely to be a nevus. And remember the base of these lesions. There's no dispersion of cells at the base of a lesion. Remember with a nevus, as you go down to the base of it, the cells will often disperse in single spread into the surrounding dermis. Whereas in melanoma, the nests tend to remain intact and have a more, uh, a more um, blunt spreading border. And the other thing, there's no maturation of the cells at the base. That's why provision of the base of a pigmented lesion is so important for a pathologist. He's looking there for two things. He's looking to see if there's any maturation, because you know, an ordinary nevi do tend to mature. The, the, the cells often at the base of a nevus are um, less atypical than perhaps some might be at the dermoepidermal junction. This isn't the case with a melanoma. And you'll often get those mitoses at the base. So you've always got to give a specimen, not a shave that's going to go through a pigmented lesion, but one that's going to at least give the base for the pathologist to examine. So that's an overview. Let's have a look at some of the, the pictures of a superficial spreading melanoma. That's the clinical here. You can see the variation in colors. Blackish here, brown, various shades here, more red in this area irregular edge, large lesion. Um, it's lonely. There's nothing else in the area that looks anything like it. And then if you have a little look at the dermatoscopy, what you start to see, there are some dot vessels in the pink area here. Uh, there's brown, varying shades here. There's a suggestion of small pseudopods coming off the uh, network at this area here. We need to enlarge this to see it. And there's these um, black and slightly uh, gray structures that we're seeing in this area. Um, the irregular edge, sometimes you look for structureless areas at an edge. Uh, this may be where there's been a little bit of regression. So the varying colors, the size and shape, the pseudopods, um, the dot vessels here, all of this would point towards this being a melanoma. And when we have a little look at the uh, scanning view of the lesion, it looks somewhat like this. Now, you might look at this and say, what are these? Are these all lymphocytes? There's a sort of inflammatory process here. We can see collections of cells up here and here and various collections through here. But when we go in and have a little look at it um, in a close-up, we find that these are all nests. And these nests are extending down into about the reticular dermis here. So it's a clock level three. One's in situ, two is into the papillary dermis, three is filling the, uh, the papillary dermis. This one's it's a clock level three. It's almost going into the reticular dermis here. It's 0.8 of a millimeter in thickness. So that's from the stratum granulosum here all the way down to the deepest part of the melanoma. Here you'll see the nests. There's some clefting, those clearer bits you see around about the uh, nests there. That's also a feature of melanoma, but, uh, you know, you can get it also in spitz Um And see how high these nests go here into this epidermis. Um, the higher up they are like this, the darker, the blacker that area is going to be because of the melanin being closer to the surface. And you've got some individual cells here going up almost to the stratum corneum. You need to look more carefully at the base there. Ah, here we go. Now, there isn't really maturation of the cells as we go down in the, in, in the base here. Um, the nuclei still vary markedly in shape, and if we were to look in here, there may well be some mitosis. It's difficult to see them at this level. You can see melanin here within the uh, nests. Um, if we go a little bit further and have a look at uh, this, here we're seeing, uh, this is another view here, and we're looking up towards the epidermis, and this is this was the inverse of the other view I showed you here. These nests of melanoma cells are butting and compressing the epidermis here. Um, it's very thinned, and as I say, with these nevus cells being so close to the surface of the epidermis, these are going to look black when you look at it with a dermatoscope. There's variation, there's often hyperchromatic nuclei, and variation in the size and shape of the nuclei of the cells within these nests. They're not the 
um, a fairly regular monotonous sort of uh, size and shape that you would see in uh, in anevis. Here's another view of uh, this lesion. You know, as you go more laterally, it's not as um, it's not as prominent. And what you tend to see here is a more lentiginous spread. Certainly, there are some small nests here, um, but these are some atypical melanocytes, varying size of the nuclei, um, and some lentiginous spread along the base here. Here's a nest there with a bit of clefting round about it. So as it says there, more single cell or lentiginous proliferation of atypical melanocytes along the basement membrane. And this is this lateral spread that we were talking about. Here's another bit um, when we looked, and you can see the split that's occurring above the nests here. And this is acanthalysis, um, separation of the keratinocytes from the nests of melanocytes um, going into the epidermis. And here's some of the melanocytes have been extruded all the way up to the base of the uh, stratum corneum here. Um, so this again will look quite black when you see it. So acanthalysis of the epidermis with atypical melanocytes extruded through the epidermis here. Sorry, we just come back one. Let's just go forwards. I think we had one more um, view, and this again was a more lentiginous. Uh, sorry, let me just go back one. I think, do we have one last view here? Yeah, here we go. This is just one of that last case showing much more in the way of upward or pagetoid spread of melanocytes into the epidermis. So, you know, this is your superficial spreading melanoma with the upward spread, the pagetoid spread of atypical melanocytes, the varying size nests, not all at the end of the reti ridges but extending, the varying size of nests, and the staccato arrangement of these nests, not a nice regular arrangement. Here you have got lymphocytes, you've got an inflammatory reaction um, as part of the immune reaction to this melanoma. And if you're looking at scanning view, it's often this that, uh, that attracts your eye. You look then at the, at the epidermis here. So most of what we're seeing there is in situ. Um, this is the lateral component of that. But it's the upward spread of these clear melanocytes here that we wanted to point out in this view. So that's one example of a superficial spreading melanoma that uh, tended to show uh, most of the things we wanted to show you. Here's another one. It's more difficult, this one, isn't it? Um, this was one that was arising, actually, in an immunosuppressed patient. And all you can see here is this pink area with a little bit of crusting on the surface. You might look at that and think that it's a superficial basal cell skin cancer um, rather than a melanoma. Just because of its pink color and the uh, and the ulceration, uh, I don't think we've got a dermatoscopic view, which is a shame. Um, it would have been good if we had. What it would have shown in those pink areas is probably mainly vascular changes. You would have seen dot vessels. You may have seen polymorphic vessels. There would have been a mixture of vessel types in that area. But it's, it can be very difficult to diagnose uh, that type of lesion, even with a dermatoscope. But if we look at the histopathology, this is what we had with this particular patient here. Here, you've got some nests. You've got some varying sized uh, melanocytes, standing more in a lentiginous uh, pattern here along the dermoepidermal junction. Bit of an inflammatory reaction uh, here. And if we go a little bit further along into this lesion, we start to see more nests, more atypical melanocytes here, almost a sort of streaming down pattern here. Again, your lymphocytes as part of your immune reaction trying to wall this, uh, this lesion off. Again, your lentiginous spread and some uh, attempted nesting along the edges here. A little bit further along. I suppose in that last one, part of the redness that we were seeing was part of the inflammatory reaction to um, all these lymphocytes here. Again, a bit of upward spread of melanocytes in this area here. But again, just proliferation of atypical um, melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction here. Here's a more invasive component. This is where we got to the center of that lesion. This is the crust that we were seeing. 
the epidermis here has been removed by the melanoma. These are all nests of melanoma cells. Look at the variation in the size of the nuclei and the shape of the cells in all of these nests here. This was the invasive component in this particular uh, patient. And here it's consumed the whole of the epidermis. It's taken all of the epidermis away. And this uh, think phenomenon of epidermal consumption is another feature that you'll see in uh, superficial spreading melanoma. And this is the base of it. Um, you're looking here to see if there are any mitoses. You're looking here to see if there's any uh, maturation of the cells as you go down. They actually look a bit more spindle-shaped um, at the base down here. So they haven't really, sorry, we'll go back one. They haven't really showed any signs of maturation at all. You know, you're not having nice nests of fairly monotonous-looking um, nevus cells at the base here. Um, you've got, as I say, some spindling, in fact, there um, and spreading of cells down into the base. Of this, uh, of this lesion. Uh, and I think when they had a good close look at this, um, there wasn't any maturation in depth, infiltration into the deep dermis. And actually, uh, with looking with a, a larger power, you were able to see four mitoses per square millimeter. So it's a pretty active melanoma um, in these circumstances. It was level four, 1.3 millimeter thick when this was measured to its thickest part. Um, it's a little bit more difficult sometimes to measure these when you've got removal of the stratum granulosum here, you know, when you've got the whole thing uh, ulcerated like this. And ulceration itself is another one of uh, the risk markers in, in melanoma. It will often upstage a melanoma. So in an immunosuppressed patient, uh, this is really quite a significant uh, lesion. Still, the pattern it's showing is that of a superficial spreading melanoma but level 4, 1.3 millimeters thick. So those were the various histological pictures, uh, histological features. If we just go back to that original um, dialogue slide here, an asymmetrical lesion with lateral spread, atypical melanocytes singly or in nests at the dermal or and in nests at the dermal junction. The nests themselves vary in size and shape and they're not confined to the sides of the retty ridges and they're distributed in an uneven sense. Upward or pagetoid spread of cells, sometimes that transelimination of cells into the stratum corneum that we showed um, when you get really extensive pagetoid spread. And the dermal nests tend to be bigger, sometimes with a few mitoses. There's no dispersion of cells at the base, and no maturation of cells at the base. These are the major features that you're going to see in a superficial spreading melanoma. Your major differential diagnosis of uh, this is going to be a dysplastic uh, melanocytic nevus. And, you know, it's always difficult to get into this area as to what, in fact, a dysplastic melanocytic nevus is. Often there are lesions that we look at with the dermatoscope, and we think they're melanomas, but we're picking them so early now that there's often not the upward spread. There's some atypical uh, melanocytes of the dermal epidermal junction. There's a few nests there too. Um, and the diagnosis that's sometimes given is a dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus, sometimes added off the elderly. But uh, most of us believe that in the fullness of time, if you left these, they would in fact ultimately be diagnosed as a superficial spreading melanoma. But you get other dysplastic nevi, you know, when an individual, not an older person, but an individual who's got multiple atypical looking nevi, big ones clinically, variation in color, irregular edges to them. And these are the ones that the pathologist really has, uh, has some difficulty with at times. We'll look back at uh, the dysplastic nevus, but remember the main features of that was this varying degree of atypia, this bridging between the nests. Um, a bit of epidermal spread lateral to the dermal borders of the lesion. Not a lot. These are called shoulders. And that lamella fibrosis around the nest was important as well. So uh, get a chance perhaps now to go back and look at the little video on dysplastic nevi and see if you can make some sense of the difference between the pathology of a superficial spreading melanoma and a dysplastic nevus and you then get a better idea of the problems that your pathologist face, uh, faces when uh, you've sent them a, a lesion that's early 
and it's difficult for him to you know to get all the criteria there that he needs to make this diagnosis of uh, of a superficial spreading melanoma remember these various features thanks very much